Um, hello everyone, uh, this is Sunny with Bottom Split and I'm here with a video after like a long break. <laughs> um, I know that some people might be wondering like what happened to this guy? Like did he die or something? Well, I'm not dead. Um, actually, I just I just needed a break. Um, not from, you know, sim racing, but I just needed a break from work and everything. Um, my mother hadn't met my daughter yet and me and my wife had been waiting for a while like for it to be safe for us to go back to California. So I went back to California, um, I spent a few months there and uh, before I went back, actually, just uh, to share some int information or some interesting news about sim racing for me, um, I sold my Fanatec hardware. Um, there's a bit of a long explanation for that, and I'll talk about it in another video where I talk about the used hardware that I picked up on a marketplace app here in Japan. But I did sell the gear before I left. Part of the reason was because I knew I was going to be gone for a while, and the CSL DD was going to come out. Uh, right around the corner and I wasn't sure if that was going to affect the market in a significant way if there was going to be a PlayStation compatible one that comes out at the same time so I figured just sell the podium racing wheel f1 while it was still uh, really new like I had recently purchased it because somebody could pick it up uh, while there's still a long amount of warranty left I sent them the invoice so and there was no problems with it at all so they're able to use it and you know send it in for service if they have that but you know the point is it's gone and um, while I was in California I saw something else that was really interesting that caught my attention and I realized that there's not a lot of videos talking about this subject I, I searched on YouTube pretty extensively to see if somebody talked about it because I know that it's been asked about but there's really not a lot of useful uh, answers out there when it comes to like it, when someone's asking about this in particular um, so the topic of today is can you use a gaming laptop for sim racing <laughs> is is it is it viable like is it um, okay is it a good experience um, that's the topic for today and um, as always I'm gonna give you guys the too long didn't read didn't watch too long didn't read or too long didn't watch of the video uh, which is basically yes uh, a gaming laptop is absolutely viable for sim racing with some limitations um, the first limitation is that uh, if you plan on using triple monitors just be aware that you're gonna want a GPU that's quite powerful because the desktop version of the GPU uh, that I used, which was an RTX 3060, um, in normal cases, it's actually about on par with the laptop version. But when you're running triple monitors, you're going to be using a lot more uh, video memory. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing is that uh, simulations like Automobilista 2 and iRacing ran perfectly fine um, in 1440p or in a low resolution uh, VR headset like the uh, HTC Vive, like the original Vive. But when you use high resolution displays like the uh, Valve Index, um, some of them started to get a little bit choppy. So you might have to reduce your settings. But in terms of uh, connections, in terms of like USB connections, I had no issues using wheelbases, using pedals. Uh, um, using any other simulation software, there were no issues whatsoever. So yes, a gaming laptop is a viable option, just as long as you understand that there's some power limitations there. Um, and even on a desktop, you would want a much more powerful desktop if you were going to do like a set of Corsa Competizione with triple displays or using like a Reverb uh, G2. But yeah, that's the too long didn't watch. If you can't find a gaming desktop and you're looking at gaming laptops or if you're a college student or if you're in the military and you don't have a lot of space, but maybe you have enough space for a foldable cockpit and you're thinking about getting a gaming laptop, absolutely it's totally fine but let's get to the longer section of the video so um the big question is why would you want to use a gaming laptop for sim racing um like a lot of people might say you should just use a desktop that's the number one recommendation um, before i explain why you might want to use a gaming laptop let's talk about that animosity a little bit right like it's kind of a taboo subject gaming laptops uh, pc gaming as a community tends to be overly critical of people who want to use gaming laptops. If you ask about a gaming laptop in, say, like Reddit's Build a PC uh, sub or in like, I don't know, Linus Tech Tips, like their forum or something, you'll generally get a lot of people that no matter what you're asking about why you want to use a gaming laptop, people are immediately going to jump to telling you why you shouldn't use a gaming laptop. You could say anything. I'm going to go to the International Space Station and I can't use a desktop there. Which of these gaming laptops is the best? And people will be like, 
yeah, you shouldn't use a gaming laptop. You should just use a gaming desktop because the gaming laptop is inefficient for the amount of money that you spend and the GPUs aren't real GPUs. Um, and I don't think any of that equipment is even compatible with a gaming laptop and uh, you're stupid. So like, yeah, I don't understand why people take that sort of attitude or perspective, but there are some places where asking about gaming laptops offers a little bit more useful information, but there's not a lot of overlap with uh, sim racing. And the reason why is because sim racing is kind of a, a niche subset of PC gamers that's even more critical of like, you know, ideas that go against the grain. So sim racers that primarily race on PC are even going to be more critical of gaming laptops. So there's really like, it's really difficult to get the information you need without having to scrape out all the negativity and stuff. And, and then even then you're probably getting very outdated information. A lot of the stuff people say about gaming laptops was maybe true a hundred years ago or something i don't know but it's not relevant now like even even when you say how weak the gpu is that hasn't really been true for a while like it's true that there are weak laptop gpus but there's some gpus that are almost as powerful as the desktop versions like the 1660 ti and the rtx 3060 and i think the 10 series like the 1080 mobile and the 1070 mobile were actually very very powerful they were almost as powerful as their desktop counterparts um so it really depends on which you know gpu you get which configuration you get and to go even further Another reason why you might be considering a gaming laptop is because the market really, really sucks right now. If you wanted to buy one of these, uh, you're going to be looking at spending $800, maybe $900. The last time I, ch I, I checked StockX, the prices were really ridiculous for this graphics card. So, I mean, you're going to end up spending... $2,000 for a mid-range gaming PC if you wanted to build it yourself or you take chances on a pre-build to hope that it's in stock but like with this gaming laptop I, I walked into Micro Center and it was just there like you're just waiting and it has a 3060 I'm going to talk about the specs later but somebody who's maybe going to college soon and maybe they want to get into sim racing but they don't really want to you know sit around outside Best Buy from like 8 p.m. on a Tuesday until like 10 a.m. on a Thursday morning, like somebody in a situation where they can't do that or they can't pay scalpers or they don't get lucky at Micro Center or with a new egg uh, shuffle or whatever, all the ridiculous crap that you have to do to get a GPU right now, someone who doesn't have that sort of circumstance that they can do those things, a gaming laptop is a good way for them to get a system that they can use right now that, that, that offers them a lot of the things that they're looking for. And if they're a college student or if they're a truck driver or if they're in the military or the Peace Corps, I don't any sort of traveling profession or or occupation or whatever they're doing right now if it requires a lot of travel a gaming laptop could be really solid because they could just put it into a bag and go home to see their family now the question is is yes you you get a lot of mobility but what do you sacrifice and is there anything that makes it difficult uh, for sim racing now the particular laptop that I'm using is a Lenovo Legion 5 and it has an RTX 3060 GPU. It has a Ryzen 7 5800H, which is an 8-core, 16-thread uh, Ryzen processor that boosts up to around 4 gigahertz in speed. It has a 1 terabyte uh, solid-state drive. It's an M.2 drive, um, and it has 16 gigabytes of RAM. I did upgrade the RAM uh, to 16 gigabytes of better timings RAM. You can watch a video by Jared's Tech where he talks about that, how to see if you need to do that or not, and, and what the best kit is to buy. I'm going to link that in the description of the video. But this laptop was overall, it's, it's pretty solid. Um, I've tested it in regular gaming, and I've found that um, it holds up really well in regular gaming. The screen is a 1080p, 144 hertz uh, display that has an sRGB rating of 100%. So that means the colors are pretty good. 300 nits in brightness. The only thing that I would say that's kind of so-so about it is that the speakers are really not that great. Um, and the fact that uh, I had to upgrade the memory, that, that, was, that threw me off a little bit. There is a Lenovo Legion 5 Pro version. Um, for the most part, the two are very similar. The only main difference is that the Legion 5 Pro has an aluminum shell or an aluminum top casing, and it also has a 1440p display instead of a 1080p display. Um, but other than that, they're both available in pretty much the exact same specifications. If you go to Micro Center to buy the one that I bought, you uh, can only buy the RTX 3060 version. It was on sale for 
1200 bucks when I bought it, but I think it's gone up to 1300 now. Um, I think that's the normal price, but if, if you watch it every now and then it goes on sale. There is a 3070 version that's available on Walmart. Um, you have to be really lucky to get that one because it's significantly lower price compared to how much a Legion 5 would cost if you ordered it directly from Lenovo. And also the Walmart version is a Legion 5 Pro. The Legion 5 Pros are normally 150 bucks more expensive, give or take, than uh, give or take a few, like maybe 10 or 20 bucks. They're normally about that price more expensive than the standard Legion 5. So you've got a Legion 5 Pro with an RTX 3070 and the same processor and all the other components are basically the same, but it's only 1400 bucks if you can get it at Walmart. So it sells out pretty quick, but I'm gonna include um, the model in the description of the video. I might include the BrickSeek link. I, I haven't had a lot of luck linking people to BrickSeek so that they can actually see the product. So I might just give you the product. And if you check BrickSeek, you can see if it's in stock near you. But um, the, the basically, the, the, the gaming laptop that I'm testing is the Legion 5 non-pro with an RTX 3060. And um, just a little bit of testing methodology that I'm going to talk about. I'm, I'm not Linus and I'm not Optimum Tech or any of those people, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of, um, of some background for why the normal gaming test is not really relevant here. So like Jared's Tech did a very excellent test comparing the desktop 3060 to the laptop 3060, and he used the exact same laptop that I have here, which is the Legion 5 with the 3060 and he found that the laptop was in some cases about 10 percent slower than the desktop version but there's a few there's a few circumstances that make it different for sim racing so first of all sim racing um, the actual software itself is completely different so the sim racing games or sim racing titles like Assetto Corsa Competizione for example has pretty complex physics and it's been known to really pummel GPUs. So like even on a desktop with a 3080, if you're running triple 1440p displays or triple 1080p displays, a set of course of competizione with a lot of settings maxed out can really bring a GPU down to its knees. Um, and this especially becomes the case with VR. So sim racing games, they have like complicated physics, they have weather patterns, they have telemetry data, they have all this stuff that's being calculated by the processor. So my assumption going into this was that the CPU load was a higher demand in sim racing titles. And going into that too, there's also the hardware side of it. So when you're doing like a, a, a gaming test between a desktop and a laptop, at most, maybe you have a gaming mouse connected and you could probably even get away just using the keyboard that's on the laptop. It's not going to be a great experience, but it is there and you could basically minimize the amount of like external or additional drivers that are running at the same time. With sim racing, it's a much more realistic example if you connect a wheelbase and pedals and you compare it doing that because with the Simicube 2, you've obviously got the uh, true drive software running at the same time with sim pedals sprint you've obviously got like the smart control and the pedals drivers running at the same time maybe you've got a, a steering wheel driver running at the same time and maybe a sim like sim dash or some kind of hub that's connected and maybe a separate shifter there's really like at least three usb devices that you could be running at the same time connected to your device and that's going to have some kind of overhead and i wanted to see what that performance overhead was as well um, the other reason why it's important to compare a desktop to a laptop specifically for sim racing is because there's the VR element, right? So in a normal test, maybe Jared's Tech only uses a single external display or the internal display and then just compares them like that and it's just like, okay, there's there's the FPS difference. But with sim racing, you're probably interested in what is the VR performance like because you could connect a VR headset to a gaming laptop, but it's going to be a higher GPU uh, memory demand. So how much is it going to affect the performance with VRAM coming into play? And I'm going to talk about that as well. So basically, there's some stuff from a normal normal gaming performance review that's relevant, but there's some stuff that's not. So let's see how they do. So how did it do, right? Like none of this stuff really matters if you don't know how it did. Um, so if you saw my too long didn't watch, you'll know that the gaming laptop for the most part, it's fine for sim racing, but there are some caveats that I brought up and I'd like to go into more details about them. So for single screen uh, sim racing, the gaming laptop was totally fine in Automobilista 2 and iRacing. Now in Automobilista 2, I did an AI race with a full grid um, and I did it in 1440p with settings mostly on high and I was able to get a really solid frame rate over 120 frames per second. So my theory is that even up to maybe an ultra wide, like a single ultra wide, like 3440 by, by I think it's 1440 ultra wide would totally be able to handle 
um, like just fine with this gaming laptop with the RTX 3060. iRacing, pretty much the same thing. Uh, the graphics engine is not too demanding um, when you're running like a single display. So that that was totally fine. It was it was pretty much above 100 frames per second the whole time. I think it was 144 locked the entire time. Um, and that was pretty much the same performance that I got in the desktop that had an RTX 3060. Um, when it comes to the steering wheel and the pedals, um, I had zero issues with that. I connected a Bluetooth wireless uh, button plate by Derek Spear Designs, and I had my SimiCube 2 Pro and my Hoisingfeld Sprint pedals. And once I uh, calibrated them and I mapped the controls in each of the sim racing titles, I had zero issues with using them. There was never any issues with force feedback going out or with the USB devices going to sleep. Um, no problems there whatsoever. And one thing I tested was because there's limited USB ports on a gaming laptop, obviously. So you're probably going to want to use like a USB 3.0 hub. Um, so I had a hub connected to a USB 3.0 um, extension and I tried uh, disconnecting it. And as long as I kept the devices connected to the same ports on the USB hub and I connected that USB hub to the same USB port on the laptop, my button mappings and all of my uh, calibrations, they all stayed the same. I didn't have to remap my controls or or do any weird stuff with that so um, basically if you have your gaming laptop you could buy like a, a usb hub connect all your devices to the same ports and then when you need to use those devices just connect them to the laptop if you want it to be more on the safe side maybe you could get a powered hub and just always have it plugged in next to where your cockpit goes but for the most part yeah zero issues with devices um, now let's get into where the results get a little bit sort of mixed and this is the area that you're going to want to pay attention to if you're wondering where like you know what the cons are to using a gaming laptop for sim racing so let's talk about like you know the big guy in the room which is Assetto Corsa Competizione now this sim racing title I immediately knew that if there was going to be anywhere where you were going to see a performance delta it was going to be with this sim racing title because the graphics engine is just way way more complicated than iRacing or Automobilista 2 and to go even further even on a desktop with really powerful GPUs you can see some pretty strange performance differences on you know even on high-end hardware so I knew that there was going to be a difference I wasn't expecting it to be this big um, basically the gaming laptop was between 35 to 50 percent slower than the desktop with an RTX 3060 and keep in mind this is a desktop with a 5600x um, 16 gigabytes of RAM just like the laptop and an RTX 3060 it's not a 3060 Ti and it's not a 3070 and it's even a two fan 3060 which like is one that you know it doesn't boost as high as like maybe some Strix 3060 or something so even with you know relatively similar hardware between the desktop and the laptop and even with the fact that this laptop performs very similar to, similarly to the desktop with a 3060 in regular games, even demanding games like Cyberpunk 2077, for example, there was a massive performance delta with a set of Corsa Competizione. I have a lot of theories about why it was that big, but basically when in a starting grade when there's a lot of cars on the screen is where the performance really really tanks it drops down to about 65 frames per second whereas on the desktop i was hitting you know 100 frames per second even you know right as the race started and even you know in the really packed areas nothing below 100 frames per second on the desktop which is different from this gaming laptop where i think i was lucky to ever get close to 100 frames per second um, for the most part i was between you know 75 to 85 and in particularly crowded areas it dropped down all the way to 65 frames per second um, my theory is that it could be because of the cpu demand um, like I said, of course, the Competizione, if there's that many cars on the screen, there's a lot of particle effects and a lot of physics that's, physics that's taking place. Um, so it's possible that the CPU demand is, is much higher. And keep in mind, the 5600X boosts all the way up to 5 gigahertz versus only 4 gigahertz on the gaming laptop. I, I think maybe the 5600X doesn't go all the way to 5, but it's, it's definitely above 4.5. It's somewhere between 4.7 and 4.8. And the laptop, I never saw it go above 4 gigahertz because it's not a 5900 HX so you know it doesn't get that high of a speed the other potential reason for that big difference that big Delta is the VRAM so the gaming laptop version of the 3060 only has six gigabytes of VRAM whereas the desktop version has 12 gigabytes so you know it could be related to that but unfortunately that's not the only place where the Delta started to get a little bit wider um, there was also in VR now with the HTC Vive which has a much lower resolution than the valve index there was no problems whatsoever um, I was able to do do iRacing and Automobilista 2 in VR, and I never drop below 90 frames per second. 90 hertz is the limit of the HTC Vive. But as soon as I connected my Valve Index 
um, this is where things started to become more challenging with the gaming laptop. Um, I began to see drops to 62 frames per second and maybe as low as 40 frames per second. Um, and I want to say that in Automobilista 2, the drop in frame rate was enough that, um, that I started to feel like there was stuttering on the screen. So um, I think it, it didn't drop to like an unplayable frame rate, but it was definitely under 50 frames per second. And when you're used to like 90 hertz as a refresh rate, it can be a little bit unsettling. So what I'll say is, is that if you want to use a Valve Index, you're probably going to want to consider um, dropping down the settings a little bit or maybe reducing the SS factor, the scalability factor of the Valve Index. So that means, you know, HP Reverb G2 is, is probably completely like it's it's not even going to be a good idea with this rig but on a desktop with a 3060 you know you wouldn't want to run an hp reverb g2 anyway because i don't think it has enough gpu power to drive it but yeah i mean for the most part it, it was totally fine i mean you have to be you have to have reasonable expectations and even with a desktop 3060 i want to say the valve index would be it would be pushing that 3060 to the limit you know even if you got a playable frame rate i i don't have a lot of confidence that it would be good for like long term i think you'd want to upgrade the gpu down the line which is something you can do with the desktop but you can't really do with the laptop um yeah so that's basically the summary of the performance no issues with the hardware no issues with the single display and no issues with low resolution uh vr um i didn't test assetto corsa in vr because i just got to be honest with you I don't enjoy a set of Corsa Competizione in VR. It's just not very well optimized. I think they use the Unreal Engine, which doesn't really play well in VR. Just to help explain why I don't do VR in a set of Corsa Competizione, I have an RTX 3080 and a 5900X in my desktop. And even with that rig, I don't do a set of Corsa Competizione in VR. It just takes too much tweaking. I don't like going through all that trouble to tweak the settings to get it to a point where it plays right because those settings might work with one rig, but they might not work with another. And so, yeah, I just don't want to deal with it. Maybe in the future, they'll release a new version of the engine that plays better in VR. Until then, ACC and VR, that's no fly zone for me. All right, so I'll try to keep this really short. I've already gone over time but in conclusion how did it do right well it did really well um i mean like it did really well within reason right i mean if you had a desktop with a 3060 you can't expect to run like you know triple 1440p displays and max settings or whatever so you know for being the desktop equivalent of a 3060 desktop i think it did pretty much what i expected it to do and a little bit more um there were some challenges if you're using a valve index uh, you're going to want to make sure that you dial down your settings a little bit because even with Automobilista 2 and iRacing, the frame rate dropped just a little bit. And if you're running triples, you're going to want to run triples 1080p. And, and, and even then, I'm not really sure if it's going to do it just fine. I think it should be okay because I think triple 1080p displays is only a few uh, pixels more than like a 4K display. And I think it, this would be okay at 4K with, uh, again, with the settings dialed down a little bit reasonably. But if you're running a single display, like a single, uh, like 3440 um, ultra wide, 38, I, I don't remember what the resolution is, but the ultra wide uh, monitor, um, that's a 34 inch. If you're running something like that, um, or if you're running like an ultra wide that has like the 1080p, um, like height, then I think it's totally fine. Um, the 3060 Lenovo Legion 5, or if you're running like a single 1440p display, or if you're running like a like an OG Vive or like a Rift S or like a, like any any of those uh, VR headsets that have a slightly lower resolution than some of the newer stuff, um, it's totally fine. In terms of equipment, it totally did all the the wheelbase and pedals and everything uh, totally fine in that regard too. But on top of all that, you just get a really slick gaming laptop you know like if you're in college there's a lot of reasons that you would want a gaming laptop you can um you can put it in a bag and take it home on the weekends uh like whenever you visit family um it takes up a lot less space you can carry it with you to class uh, the battery life is mm, so so <laughs> if you need something with a lot of battery life I, i'm sorry but you better hope that the class has laptop outlets because this thing even with just internet browsing i think I, I got like two and a half hours so battery life on gaming laptops is unfortunately still not that great. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the most part, it was it was pretty solid. And, and um, yeah, I like if you're looking for a gaming laptop and you're wondering, can it be used for sim racing? The answer is yes, absolutely. It can be used for sim racing. 
Um, I would personally try to spend the extra 200 bucks or 300 bucks to get, uh, no, I guess it's 200 bucks, even if you get this on sale. Um, right now it's 1299. At that price, I would definitely search for the Walmart uh, Legion 5 Pro with the 3070. That one, I, I wish I could test it. I have a feeling that it would like exceed uh, the disappointing areas of the performance that this one gave me uh, with VR and with like with Assetto Corsa Competizione. I have a feeling that 3070 would, would go above and beyond those expectations. The 3070 on the laptop for the Legion 5, it's a 130 watt one, just like the 3060 is, but I think it performs very similarly to like a 3060 Ti um, in between a 3060 Ti and a 3070. So it's it's definitely a really solid performance and, and that GPU level is more than enough for a Valve Index uh, with uh, iRacing and Automobilista 2 or running triple 1080p displays or, or an ultra wide. So yeah, that's it. Uh, my next video, I'll probably talk about the used equipment that I bought that replaced my Fanatec. And if you look behind me, you can see that Pelican air case. That's what I used to bring my SFFPC back from the United States uh, to Japan. And I'm going to try to get my Hoisingfeld Sprint pedals and my Semi-Cube 2 Pro inside of that Pelican air case and that's going to be a challenge, but let's 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 explore that together. Really quick shout out to my nieces and nephews back home, uh, Jordan, uh, David, Ariana, Gemma, Alessandra. I love you all, and I will see you all soon.